Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I'm going to test out some more planes for my airplane mod pack, upcoming still, uh, that will mainly focus on planes from the 1950s and 60s, though it will include the AN-225 which I've already made and possibly some other models that aren't from the 1950s and 60s. But the main reason I'm doing this is because I have a plan. I have a I have a side use for these things, not Kerbal Space Program itself, but I intend to make a game, uh, just, just a test game, uh, a little airplane shooter where you shoot aliens from Roswell sort of thing. So I have that sort of idea percolating and I'm making the models for that, so I might as well make them for Kerbal Space Program as well, and so here we are. So we are going to test out the F-100, F-101, and F-102 here and see if they work. As you can see, I've made the body, the wings, the horizontal stabilizers, and the vertical stabilizer, but not the other control surfaces. In the model that I have in Blender, I have the control surfaces, but for the purposes of Kerbal Space Program, we don't want to have the clutter for every single one of these planes having all the control surfaces. Your aero section will be flooded by all these control surfaces and be horrible, so it's just better to use B9 procedural parts for those. And uh, because we already have the engines for these configured, in fact, all three planes use the same engine in this case, the J57. And since we have a model of that, I'm not making a separate model of that. And the landing gear is a whole pain. And actually, for my intended shooter game, uh, the planes don't need landing gear. You're not going to be landing in them. It's sort of like a very simple arcade shooter thing. So, yeah, uh, we'll just use the stock landing gear for that. So, otherwise, we will test it out and see if it works, and let's see how they work, and hopefully they do. Let's bring this outside. Well, as you can see, the rear wheels are right on the point where, the pivot point, the ideal pivot point, so that's good. And our fly-by-wire is active. I'm using atmospheric autopilot, and I would like to throttle up, please. It's uh, not reading my throttle very well. Okay, there we go, maybe. Okay, and the air intake is built into the body. So here we go. Now I've had some trouble with these planes veering off to one side or another. I've got FAR enabled on the wings and the horizontal stabilizer, but not the vertical stabilizer because that tended to make it veer much more substantially. We don't need the afterburner anymore. So we are going up. The performance for this plane wasn't great. It was actually the first US Air Force fighter that was able to sustain Mach 1 in level flight. So go past the sound barrier in level flight. Um, not go past, I mean stay past. But they can't really do too much beyond that. It can go a max speed of Mach 1.4, but we'll test it out. One problem that we have is that I don't have air brakes, so it's got to be an interesting landing. I had previously made an F-100 uh, and an F-101, but the model was inferior to this and also the textures as well, and the, the that model was just a stock aero, not far at all. And also I hadn't made the horizontal stabilizers, which I made into all moving stabilizers in this case. I did make sure to have the Mark 1 cockpit in here. It's just the Mark 1 cockpit, nothing fancy. I wonder if we can... I guess I can't trim my head more than that, so we can't see the wing or anything. Oh well. As with all planes with FAR, it tends to take off at a very high speed. As far as I can tell, that's not a drag issue. That's just a FAR issue. If I could tune FAR to fix that, I would, but FAR seems to be optimized for transonic and supersonic, and it's not really great with low speed stuff. And I think, but I'm not sure, that's mainly due to the fact that it doesn't really take into consideration the shape of the airfoil. And I somewhat suspect that it's treating like all the airfoils as if they're X-15 or F-104 airfoils, like really thin. It's possible that I need to increase the internal fuel load in this. I think it probably carried more than 2,000 liters. 
for the F-101 and F-102, I had solid numbers for its in their internal fuel load, but not for this one. I've gotten their dry masses to be as close as possible to the real thing. We are lighting afterburner, and I'll bring up FAR for a reference. Okay, leveling out to break the sound barrier. Well, going down a little bit. Okay, we are past Mach 1, 1 1.008 now. But we are not quite level yet. I'll just let it climb back to zero on the vertical speed, I guess. We'll see if it can do that. Well, it's not really getting back to level as quickly as I'd like, so I'll nudge it up a little bit and see if it can stay past Mach 1 properly. It's slowing down a bit though. It's very borderline. Yeah, I'm I'm maybe if we go up higher, but right now I'm not seeing that it's gonna hold Mach 1 and get to level. So we might be slightly underperforming here. As far as Mach 1.4 goes, I'm sure we could manage it in a dive. That's a maximum speed after all, so Yeah, I would say it's slightly underperforming. But I certainly wouldn't want to reduce the drag, and we'll see why when we come down for a landing. It's not going to dump speed very easily like this. It's, as far as the aerodynamic overlay, I mean, obviously we have drag. <laughs> that's, that's not a big surprise, and that the body is the main source of the drag. Hardly any on the wings. That's a far thing, actually. Uh, the way far calculates things, well, Mach 1.02 or something left. We'll just level out and cut the afterburner there. Um, yeah, far aerodynamics is... It won't be displayed very well like this. So whatever the stock game is reading doesn't exactly agree with what far is thinking about. So... Yeah, we can't just use that to assess things. Nor can we entirely use the dialogue in the VAB or SPH, and that's because I haven't put FAR on the vertical stabilizer, so it gets confused by that. So we're in a bit of a predicament. By the way, the F-100 Super Sabre did set the world speed record in 1953 and then in 1955 with the C version. The 1953 speed record was 337 meters per second so it's not like we had a lot of room as far as uh, how much further we could have gone with this uh, we were getting pretty much up there on the 1955 version I'll do the calculation they have it in miles per hour of course um, 367 so we're definitely not in the F100 C class in 1955 but we're probably a good match for the F-100, the original. It really could just barely break the sound barrier. Probably the F-100D was the one that could actually go Mach 1.4. Well, I'm basically idle and it's slowing down more or less as expected. If you take a look at how it slows down, it basically seems to have the drag I would expect. The problems are the takeoff and getting to maximum speed, though reviewing the speed record it seems like maybe this is okay on the maximum speed thing. It's really just takeoff where for one reason or another FAR always makes us go faster than we ought to. Alright, well, let's see if we can take it from inside the cockpit. I don't know, this is probably not safe. We've basically idled the engine right now. And I'm still gonna make some turns to kill speed because I didn't put the air brakes on. Oh, 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 we've gone out of whack. We've gone out of whack. 
Well, let's get out of this view. No! No! We were so close. Oh, and we were using Cat and Escape Canaveral. Old version of Cat and Escape Canaveral. I think they've got it being... Uh, being solid now, but it's water right now, so Clausen doesn't die, but yeah, it looks like maybe I turned too vigorously and we had a bad angle of attack and it stalled out. Okay, well, couldn't make a nice landing with this, but for the most part it was flying well, just at the last bit. Okay, anyway, we will, uh, well, we'll just revert that since it's a test and we'll move on to the F101 for now. And this one has two of those engines, uh, the J57s. So the F100, F101, and F102 have the J57s. The F104, I think, had a J79 GE engine. And then the F105 and F106 had the J75 engine. So those are upgraded. I haven't got those yet, so we're just doing the ones with this kind of engine. And the F-101 having two of them uh, can go faster. It can go to Mach 1.7. And it is also heavier though, so it does have that counterbalance. And yeah, I've got it all set up. Same idea, um, the vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizers, those are all done by me, but uh, the control, other control surfaces are not, and well, let's hope for the best. Um, we got our pilot back, so Clausen is back in. Okay, here we go. Atmospheric pilot on, and engines. I have a lot more clearance there. The wheels are sort of digging into the runway a bit. The collider might need to be in a better position. Uh, okay, okay, don't go sideways, don't go sideways, go off the ground, go off the ground. Uh, okay. Still, the speed that it needs to get off the ground is not ideal. The flaps don't seem to do very much, incidentally. So I don't bother putting them down. Anyway, we are accelerating wonderfully. I mean, might need to change the shine on it and lighten it up. I was going for more of a gray color. If you take a look at images of the F-101 Voodoo, um, it's got a lighter gray going on than this. So I think it's mainly Textures Unlimited making it a little bit too shiny. I can change those numbers. This is much more heavily loaded with the kerosene. And this does carry the correct fuel load for its internal fuel. And Okay, we seem to be at a good height to break the sound barrier here. So I'll level out and activate the afterburner. Afterburners, we have two. And we are now guzzling a lot more fuel. But unlike the F-101, uh, unlike the F-100, uh, this should not have a hard time of this. And we are through the sound barrier without any trouble. As you might have expected, the F-101 at one point also broke the world speed record. Uh, it did so in 1957 at a whopping 1,200 miles an hour compared to 822 miles an hour for the F-100C in 1955. In between those two, there was the Ferry Delta II. Ultimately, the F-101 Voodoo was beaten by the F-104 Starfighter. Again, its maximum speed was Mach 1.7. So we don't really want to see it achieve that in level flight. Because that would be too much. Well, we are getting there though. Mach 1.6. All sorts of effects on the wings now. I mean, it's not gonna get past 
1.7 by a crazy amount, but it's sneaking up there. Well, Mach 1.7, it might be able to go faster, but it's going to take a while to get to Mach 1.8 anyway. I think we'll just accept this situation. I think this is performing well enough. Let's turn around and head back home. We gotta be a little bit heavy though. Well, I have basically idled the plane and it's slowing down but not, you know, vigorously. Once again, drag is more or less what you would expect. I think just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna just take it from out here. I don't know if it is safer or not, but let's just go with this. Um, looks like only one side our flap is down. I'll just retract that then. Oh, I can manually put down the flaps, I suppose. Hmm, deflect more. Okay, well, now we've got them on both sides. I don't know if they do anything. They don't generally seem to. Technically, the engine is still running even though the sound went out because I can see kerosene consumption there. We are still going very fast, though. Okay, well, gotta let it touch down here. Okay, I wish I had parachutes. Oh, we're gonna skip. We're gonna skip. Oh, no. Uh, okay. Well, this time Clausen was killed. Hmm. Air brakes. We need air brakes. But, alright. Except for that. <laughs> uh, landings are not going very well today, are they? Um. I actually knew where the air brakes were on the F-101, or were supposed to be, but I don't actually know where they're supposed to be on the F-102. Ah, uh, well, who knows. We'll see if that works out for us. Well, this is peculiar because it doesn't have a horizontal stabilizer. Also, the rudder is very small compared to the vertical stabilizer. We'll see how that works. It only has one J-57 engine. And as a result, it cannot go as fast as the F-101. Not too sure why they did that. Uh, I'm pulling up and it's not rotating. We're at 100. I'm having trouble keeping it steady. Uh, well, I mean that... Hmm. Okay, let's see about what might be causing the problem for rotation. Well, I had certainly checked out the center mass and center lift before starting out, and it is where you can see it. They're not, it's not a bad positioning. That should work. I mean, of course, they're pretty far back. The wing is such that they would be. So it's not, it's not wrong. And the landing gear is where it ought to be. We can try shifting it up a little bit. Um, but maybe... Maybe we're just not getting enough lift with this for some reason. I suppose to that end I'll underfuel it. We will, we'll try underfueling it. Seeing if that helps. Okay, well, it's not flopping on its tail, so moving up the landing gear did not hurt anything. And we're at half fuel this time. Uh, it's turning hard to the right. Oh, no, it's turning hard to the left. No! Well... Okay, it might have some skidding problems, too. Let's try that one more time. Come on, 90. We should be able to rotate at that point. Uh, well. Let's try moving the landing gear a little bit further forward. I don't know.
At a certain point, it's going to flop on the tail, though. Can't have the landing gear, the main landing gear, forward of the center of mass. Okay, well, still no flop on the tail. That's good. Uh, come on, steady to 100, 120. Yeah, well, okay, so we have a problem here. It certainly should take off at that point. And though the fire dialogue is not going to help us here because, like I said, it's messed up by the vertical stabilizer. Uh, it always says that, I mean, that would indicate that it can't take off, but it says that for the other planes as well, so got a complicated situation here. I don't know, it's uh, reference area, skilled cord and skilled span seem a little bit short. Let me see what that is for the F-101. No, the F-101 has even shorter ones. So I guess that's fine. Obviously a smaller cord. So yeah, it looks good, but I'm gonna have to figure out what is wrong with it. Maybe it's just the landing gear positioning. We'll scooch it up a little bit more. One last time. Uh, oh, oh, okay, okay, it's flopping back to the nose, that's good. So it looks like it can rotate. Oh, it's going squirrely. Rotate, rotate, 110. I mean, if it can't rotate by 110, it ain't doing it. Okay, it's snuffed out. I'll scooch it a little bit more, but we're probably getting to the limit here. You know what? Let's just go for it. The last opportunity. I can shove it back down like that. Uh, it's going left already. Uh, okay, it's just skidding. All right, all right. So I don't know what's ex what exactly is going wrong with the F-102. It's basically set up the same way as the previous two, so it's sort of surprising. Obviously, the wing is different. Um, our controls are configured correctly. Pitch roll on the ailerons, well, elevons really, and just pitch on the inner ones, and then. Of course, a big problem is that we don't have a huge rudder for yaw, yaw control, but really at the speeds that we're going at, we should be able to take off at that point. So I'll move these a little bit further back. We'll have to find some other solution. Maybe moving the center of lift a little bit further forward will help. I'll have to do further testing off camera to figure that out. But anyway, for now, this is the progress on the airplanes that I'm going to be making for the airplane mod. And with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.